in my short time here at day one, it's been very clear to me just how lucky we are to have a group of allies, advocates, and supporters who help bring the work of day one to life. One of those people is Sarah Klein. <laughs> In the brief time that I've known Sarah, I have been immediately struck by her candor, by her power, by her tenacity, by her fantastic sense of humor, which have inspired me and countless others. As a survivor, Sarah has used her own narrative and has become a leading champion for survivors worldwide. She's joining us this evening as an attorney, an advocate, the chair of our host committee, and a person who received the Day One's Voice of Courage Award just last year. Her story and commitment to this work reminds us all that anything is possible. So please help me in welcoming the inimitable Sarah Klein to the stage. and the commitment you've shown to the work of day one has been one of the greatest gifts we could have received um, in the time that we've been in existence. Um, we know that your um, attention is stretched and pulled in so many directions, and the fact that you've chosen to lend some of that attention to day one is such um, an incredible offering that you have given us. Thank you. So here we are. Let's go have a chat in front of 370 people. <laughs> So Sarah, I would love to begin um, uh, by learning from you. You have been so articulate in talking about how the programming that is offered to, by day one um, is programming that all of us would have benefited from having when we were young people. And so I'd love to um, learn from you. What do you find are the most critical steps we need to take to effectively address and reduce relationship abuse among young people? Just a tiny little question. <laughs> so what critical next steps do you think we need to take? What do we need to do next to reduce yeah. and prevent dating abuse? So I just want to make sure my mic is on. Can you guys hear me OK? Everybody can hear me. A little, little louder. A little louder? I feel like I can't even hear myself. So right. if we can get that Emily, a little, a little louder. Is that better? Yeah. yeah? You can hear me OK? Yeah. OK, good. OK. A little louder, a little louder, no <laughs> feedback, a little louder, not too much to ask. Ooh, ooh. Sorry, guys, sorry. Um, so many of you heard my story last year. Um, I'm sort of known as the, well, I'm not sort of, I am known as the first known survivor of Olympic gymnastics team doctor Larry Nasser. I met Larry when I was eight years old in Michigan and um, was abused by him for the better part of 17 years after that. Um, and many of you heard my story last year. I went to his wedding. He was, you know, a, a huge pivotal part of my life. And um, when I learned and found out that this was not actual medical treatment, but instead the sexual abuse of a child, that is so much better. The mic, thank you. Um, and that started a whole sort of new journey for me in terms of identifying myself as a survivor and also as an adult woman becoming um, an advocate and coming out and actually talking about these things on a stage, which is not easy and is not fun, right? You want to be the girl in a red dress. You don't want to be the girl who everybody looks at as, you know, the longest known victim of Larry Nassar, who everybody now knows. But um, to the question, the most important thing I think about day one, and again, as Ann said, I get asked every day to, lay, to lend my name and my story and all of that behind organizations. But because I'm back here 
for a second year in a row and because I'll always be here and I've become a family member of day one is because when I was eight years old, um, going to a back room with a grown adult male who was not yet a doctor and all these things, I had no resources. I didn't know the names of my body parts. I didn't know about consent. I didn't know about right and wrong, safe touch, all the things that this organization is teaching our youth. And that's the beautiful part of day one is they are educating our youth um, from a preventative perspective. Had I been able to identify that as something wrong, which I wasn't able to do at the time, um, maybe I, and this is a big statement, and I, I feel safe here, but this is a big statement. Maybe I, Sarah Klein, could have prevented the hundreds of Larry Nassar victims that came after me. They call me the first. They date me back to the beginning. I knew him before anybody knew him. I was treated by him in that back room in that gymnastics thing before he was a doctor. Had I had the resources that day one provides, there's a potential that I could have stopped the whole thing. Now, do you put that on an eight-year-old? I don't know. Do I, am I gonna carry that my whole life? I, I can't, but the language, the resources, the outreach, the education. That's why I'm here. I have two little girls right now. This is important. This is really important for our kids. And I want all of you to think about, as you sit here tonight, the most important thing I'm gonna say, every single one of you, by either volunteering your time or your finances or whatever you can do for this organization, you're gonna save the life of a child that you'll never meet. And that's why I show up for these guys. So grateful for you. Um, and I, I think you speak so poignantly about how the work that we do is both so visible, but also the impact is so invisible. We don't have, we know that the work that we're doing is preventing tremendous coercive, life altering harm. Um, but we don't necessarily get to see that. And you so, can't measure that, right? right? Like you can't right. measure the child that you save. Yeah. That's not a statistic. Yeah. yeah. In thinking about this collective gathering of people who have demonstrated so much investment in the mission of day one, what do you want everyone in this room to know and take with them when they go? Listen, I think I just said it like, yeah. <laughs> I, I don't know how else to say it. And, and I, again, like what you see is what you get. I said last time in my speech, I'm from Michigan. Like I must have said it four times last year. I'm from Michigan. What you see is what you get. I have nothing to sell. I have nothing to promote. I have no skin in the game. I literally have dedicated my life to keeping children safe the way nobody kept me safe. And what I want to say is it's been a lifelong journey of healing. Like the scars that I carry, the repercussions of being sexually abused by a serial pedophile for 17 years is, is a lifelong sentence. I'm still alive, but it, in a way it's a cut by a thousand deaths, mm -hmm. a death by a thousand cuts, right? Like it's, I wear that. And, and don't make any qualms, you know, that I don't. I, I walk with that. But I'm raising little kids, and, and little kids are what's going to keep this country vibrant and healthy and safe and a place you want to grow up. And, you know, I, I just, I can't say it enough. It's, it's not another organization that you're showing up for or giving money to or whatever. It, it's an organization where the proof is in the pudding of a small child who may <coughs> never be harmed because you all existed or may have resources because you all existed. And again, like I'm a poster child for nothing other than <laughs> like our kids should be safe. It's very, very basic. <laughs> kids should be able to grow up 
in a way that is safe and healthy and full of love. And if they're coming up against harm, they deserve a place to go. And none of that existed in small town Lansing, Michigan in 1988, right? And so here we are, you're all in New York, I'm not local, I live in Philadelphia, but these resources, day one could exist everywhere in my opinion. I mean, the, the next mission should be how do we take this national because every single one of your kids deserve the education and deserve the resources. It's pretty simple. <laughs> And sometimes the, the simplest, most common sense solutions are the one that we need, the ones that we need the most. Sarah, we're so grateful that you came back here yeah, for the you for second year, me. dazzling us all in this red no. dress. Come I'll on. always show up for you guys. I will always show up. I will always show up. <laughs> Thank you, Sarah. Yeah. Thank you for everything. Yeah, yeah. Thank yeah. you. Thanks, guys. Sarah.